Okay, well, why don't we go ahead and get started. Again, welcome everyone. I'm Arne Finaus, if you're on the global head of the KCS Academy, and welcome to our KCS Aligned and Verified Vendor Series. And in this series, you get to hear KCS best practices uh, from experts from our Aligned and uh, Verified Vendors, as well as their customers. And for those not familiar with our KCS Aligned and Verified program, it's an elite group of tools that support the KCS practices so in the case of our verified vendors, they've demonstrated that they support all eight KCS practices. And in the case of our line vendors, they're more specialized and they've proven that they support elements of the KCS methodology. And this webinar is sponsored by Cobeo. So thank you very much, Cobeo. And they are one of our KCS V6 aligned vendors. And uh, we will hear from uh, Tammy Wiley. Tammy, I'm sorry, Tammy Willie. Uh, Tammy is the Knowledge Management Strategy Lead at Jacobs Engineering Group, and she's going to share their journey with KCS beyond service and support, so their enterprise-wide strategy and uh, how they're doing on the adoption there. And joining uh, Tammy will be Bonnie Chase, and Bonnie is the Director of Product Marketing at Coveo. Uh, but some housekeeping before we begin, uh, this session is being recorded and will be posted at the KCS Academy site, as well as it's going to uh, be sent out to all who have registered. And um, please post your questions in chat. So Bonnie and I will be monitoring the chat. Um, if we can answer them, we'll try to answer them. Um, if uh, we can't, we'll bring them uh, up as appropriate to Tammy. If it's in the flow, we'll bring them up uh, right away to her. Otherwise, we'll save them for the Q&A session at the end. And while you're not speaking, please put yourself on mute. And then also want to make sure uh, you're aware of upcoming KCS Academy events. So on Tuesday, April 27th, we'll have a KCS in Action a webinar featuring uh, Jorge Carrasco, and he's from uh, Quest. Uh, Jorge will discuss Quest KCS journey and how they built and sustained their um, KDE, their Knowledge Domain Expert and Social KDE program. And so you'll hear tips and strategies for launching your own social KDE program. And communities is such a key service channel. In fact, uh, just came off a meeting where we were talking about how to measure success of your community channel and the volume, et cetera. So it's such a key channel uh, that, uh, and it's ripe for many opportunities for KD engagement. So looking forward to hearing Jorge's tips there. And then on uh, Tuesday, June 22nd, um, we are, have the pleasure of having a KCS in Action webinar featuring the Akamai team. And uh, Monique Fina, who's on, on this one today um, as a, as a uh, uh, listener, and Amit Singh and team members from the Akamai team, um, they're going to be having a conversation around the guiding principles for a uh, successful KCS adoption, including insights and perspectives from key stakeholders. And Akamai uh, is, always shares a wealth of great knowledge, so you won't want to miss that one. And it's always great to hear about digital transformations happening in this broader community, this broader um, KCS and uh, just service transformation community. Um, successes, strategies, tips, as well as ditches people encounter and how to avoid them. So if you would like to present at a future KCS in action, please reach out to me and we'll get you on the calendar and I'll put my contact information in the chat. But I'm very excited about today's event and pleased to pass it over to Tammy and Bonnie. Awesome. Thanks, Arnfin. Hello, everyone. Happy to be here today. Um, before I, I hand over to Tammy, I did want to just do a little bit of context setting into, um, into the session today. So um, really, you know, I think most of you are familiar with Coveo as um, uh, in service and support, but really, you know, one of the things that we're really kind of focusing on um, this year, especially is, is expanding into um, throughout the organization so that you can actually add relevance wherever you are, whether it's your customers, your employees, um, and your agents. And so with that, you know, what, the reason that, that I asked Tammy to join us today is because this is one of those use cases that um, is outside of what we, we normally talk about with service and support. And so i um, really excited to share this story. So um, Tammy, why don't you take it away? Great. Thanks for having me. 
Uh, so let me introduce myself. My name is Tammy Willie. I am the Knowledge Management Strategy Lead for Jacobs. Uh, I am aligned to our Sales Center of Excellence, uh, and we are we started our KCS journey within sales, and we'll talk a little bit today about how uh, we've taken that and we're about to expand it across the company to uh, start to leverage uh, the tools and the processes and uh, uh, things like Coveo to uh, across all of Jacobs. Uh, go ahead, Bonnie. Uh, tell you a little bit about Jacobs. Um, our goal is to challenge today and to reinvent tomorrow so that we can create a more connected and sustainable world. We believe that this is really part of what we do within knowledge management as well. Uh, we are a $14 billion company. We have about 55,000 employees and operate out of about 40 countries worldwide. We operate in multiple different markets and provide a full spectrum of professional services. We're also recognized for our work. We're rated the number one uh, top 500 design firm by e &R Record and the number one most admired engineering construction company within Fortune. Uh, so we're a pretty large and, and diverse organization in, in what it is that we do. Uh, there are several challenges that come with that, right? We've gone uh, through several mergers and acquisitions. Uh, we've also done a divestiture of about a third of our business. Um, we've restructured internally to uh, really drive some accountability. And we're also transitioning to the solution space versus just solely professional services. With 40 different companies, there's cultural differences. Uh, there's so many different tools, as well as uh, some undefined and inconsistent processes across all of those. Uh, so it's a big challenge to tackle across all of the rest of the company. So where did we start our journey? Well, we started pretty humble beginnings. Uh, we started in December of 2017 with about one or two dedicated folks. Uh, like I said, we started in sales and knowledge management was identified as the number one pain point. Staff spent way too much time searching and uh, verifying content. So we started by implementing a really basic KM framework, people, process, tools. And that's really become the pillar of uh, our overall program. As you tell people, it's this three-legged stool. These are the things that you have to have. And if it's not successful, it's because one of those are missing. People start to really understand what knowledge management really is about. Uh, from there, we said, uh, okay, what is it that we... Uh, are going to be doing next. So Bonnie, if you go just to the next slide. Yeah, so we, we said to ourselves, what if, what if everyone at Jacobs could find what they needed when they needed it to do their job? And this is across all of Jacobs, right? We That's our big, big vision. Uh, we wanted to start a journey where we leveraged this common methodology, the KCS, uh, principles for that, to really identify what, what is a valuable business asset, not just for sales, but across the company, and use that information then to drive the business. So we have this knowledge management transformation program vision where we really want to be the industry leader, leader to capture these valuable business assets. We wanted to create a, a knowledge management program that would go across Jacobs, leveraging the shared data and the technology that we're using to really make it easier for our employees. We have a mission and a purpose. We said, all right, what we wanna do is we wanna shape the future of knowledge management with that KM framework, people, process, and technology. We stated our purpose. And again, everyone at, able, everyone at Jacobs is able to find what they need when they need it to do their own job effective, effectively and efficiently. We set a pretty high goal for ourselves. Right? We wanted to be that industry leader. We want to be a learning and sharing organization. We want to have trusted content available when we need it. We wanted to connect that technology. We want to capture uh, knowledge in the, in the moment that we're working. Uh, and we also want to create a knowledge management career path. And we said it doesn't just matter to one particular group. It matters to multiple groups. It matters to our communities, right? Because we're able to uh, provide more sustainable and impactful pro uh, projects. It matters to our employees because it's uh, increasing their uh, ability to do their job, right? Less time searching. Uh, it's important to our shareholders, right? The, the lower uh, staff turnover, improved sales productivity. It hits the bottom line when we have good knowledge management. And it matters to our clients because then we're able to provide them better value, better solutions and the work that we're, we're doing to them as we continue to progress. 
So we have these knowledge management key program elements. And like, so we, we wanted to be this industry leader. We knew that there were several steps that we had to get there. We started at the way bottom, the way bottom of this mountain. It's disparate systems, different ways of working, you know, multiple uh, cultures and ideas of how we should treat uh, these business assets. And so we started to bring things together. We started with a few steps, dedicated roles and common processes, common technology, OCM being a big part of it, leadership. You know, these are all things that uh, feed into the KCS principles um, and the KCS methodology. And we really took this and, and started to outline how it was that we wanted to get there. So, from here, once we had this outlined and we knew the vision that we wanted to go, go ahead, uh, Bonnie. We, we said, all right, where are we gonna start? So sales is the one that was leading our way for over about, for over two years, we've started this transformation where we've gone from one to two dedicated roles to 30 full-time uh, resources to support our knowledge management program just for sales and we're expanding beyond that. We've got common processes and starting to standardize the way that we capture the information and the content that we're starting to leverage. Um, we've invested in our technology. We use Salesforce for our client success platform. We use SharePoint for Knowledge Center. And Coveo has helped us bridge those two different technologies to be able to uh, surface the content. And this is really where we started to introduce KCS within Jacobs. Uh, and the reason why? Well. KCS has proven across multiple industries. It's all about knowledge sharing. It gave us a focus. It gave us a way to really introduce knowledge management. It enabled us to be scalable and agile. And of course, it gave us a really great solid foundation for the use of Coveo uh, in our Coveo implementation. The first thing that had to happen was I got KCS V6 certified, practices certified. So with this knowledge and information, I was able to take it back to the business so that we can really start to implement KCS within our organization. One of the first things we did then was we did a baseline assessment. We took those core knowledge management uh, principles and we said, all right, trust. We knew our content wasn't always trusted, that they spent extra time validating the value. They didn't understand what it was it, what was in it for them in managing this content. Uh, demand driven. This is interesting in our, in our particular implementation, the reuse is review and searching, creating didn't quite make sense to them at the time. Abundance. We have plenty of content what happened, what we found was that people really like to keep their own stash versus sharing. This is where the culture of sharing really came in. So then from there, once we had our baseline assessment, we had to modify the KCS principles for the professional services organization because we're not a service and support. So I really like this picture because it shows that there's multiple ways to get to the other side. Uh, in general, we have to do a couple of things. We have to get to the other side. We have to take our stuff with us. We have to decide who's going to cross. We've got to get there quickly and efficiently. But are we going to take the stairs or are we going to take the zip line? And some examples of that are, you know, KCS can say, all right, a single knowledge article for this particular topic, whereas in a professional service organization such as ours, great, we've got multiple company assets, multiple assets that really speak about an employee, for example, or speak about our projects. So we have to sort of modify how would we um, have a, a content standard checklist, for example, for a, a resume, which is very different than one for a project description, which is very different from a capability statement, for example. Um, the, the idea of just in time versus just in case. For us, we really need those just in case documents. We need 55,000 employee resumes because you never know what skill set our clients are going to be asking. And so it's really a just in case to have all of those uh, in our knowledge base, uh, but there is value in having them there. So once we've modified our, our KCS principles, we then uh, started investing in our, our knowledge management roles. And we started with our knowledge workers, the dedicated roles supporting KM. We stood up a community of practice to really expand what knowledge management is across the company. And we've recently just started with the knowledge management transformation team to take it from sales to the broader organization. We invested in tools. Like I said, we have uh, Salesforce on our client success platform. It's largely structured data. 
We use SharePoint for what we call our knowledge center. This is our unstructured data. So all of those just in case assets, I just talked about those documents. And then we use uh, Coveo to bridge those two platforms together in a single search interface where we can then leverage the artificial intelligence and machine learning that Coveo offers us. So where does Coveo fit in our overall pro transportation pro transformation program? Uh, it's really helped us get set up, right? We talked about content, the roles, the processes. We're starting to see um, with Coveo and the Coveo analytics, the adoption uh, and start to really look at the metrics and how do we go back to our sales teams and say, okay, this really working in this area, but maybe not in that one. So we're, we're really, on our timeline where we thought we would be, which is uh, refreshing sometimes. We, we feel like we may be a little bit behind, but we look at something like this, we realize that we're right on track with uh, where we need to be with our overall transformation program, as well as where the Coveo implementation is really helping us take us to that next step. And Tammy, we have a, a question in the chat. Um, you know, you, you brought up the um, community of practice. What are the different tasks that you've um, incorporated into that? Uh, so we we just relaunched. We started about a year ago, and then the world got turned upside down with COVID and the way we're working, and things got um, sort of set aside. So we we relaunched in January of this year. So right now. is the knowledge management framework and how we plan to apply that across the organization. Um, it's about the OCM piece of it, the uh, communications and how we're trying to get people interested and excited about what knowledge management is and help them see how that is part of their day-to-day day -to -day, day -to -day work. So we don't have a lot of tasks right now. Um, the, the thing we did do was just ask people what it is that they wanted. What did they want out of the knowledge management community of practice? We got some really good feedback. They want to do some knowledge sharing uh, within the company. They want to do uh, learn a little bit more about what's happening about knowledge management as an industry, right? So we're starting to um, find some articles and things that we want to share. Um, a newsletter is a big popular thing that they want. So that's the first task is how are we going to share this information in, in a particular forum, right? What what um, platform do we use to share that information? So that's where we are right now. We're just getting started. So that was kind of my question. I might have uh, joined a little bit late to the party here. I, I apologize. Uh, mm -hmm. wh what platform are you guys using? Salesforce, uh, ServiceNow, what are you guys using? So for our community of practice, we're actually using MS Teams. Uh, so for the conversation and any files, then SharePoint on the back end. But for our current knowledge management ecosystem, we use both Salesforce and uh, SharePoint. And then Coveo to, to search both of them. Hmm, interesting. Okay, cool. Thank you, Tammy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll continue. Yeah. So now that we've kind of laid this framework, right, we had, we've got the the people, the roles sort of dedicated, we kind of know where our technology is. We had to make our business case to our senior leadership because really in order to take our transformation program outside of sales and across all of Jacobs, leadership buy-in is a huge piece of that, right? And we know that from our KCS um, methodology that, that that's key leadership and communication. And so we we took all of that and we created our case for change. We, we knew that people just sales, but in our case, uh, you know, we focused, started with sales, that they were spending way too much time searching for their qualifications and then having to revalidate it. We knew that, you know, in smaller organizations or smaller siloed groups, you know, picking up the phone call and talking to somebody was a really great way to do it. And a company that's 55,000 people across the globe just didn't work anymore. And so setting this, this knowledge management transformation and the framework that we were providing, again, with the focus that KCS provided us, um, we knew that we could then transform it, not just in sales, but across Jacobs as, as well. So then we go back to, to our, our um, mountain slide, right? So that's the next slide here. Where are we? We're about halfway up. <laughs> we've done the roles, we've done the common technology and we're working on improving the content. Um, we laugh sometimes that it feels like a game of uh, Candyland, 
people are familiar with that game, right? Where you're cruising along the, the trail and you think you're, you're great. You pick up your lollipop and then all of a sudden you fall down a, a slide and you have to start over. Um, it is very much that, that type of, of journey, but we've continued to climb. We've done the OCM piece, the leadership engagement, like I said, our, our, our um, business case that we presented to leadership to take this out. And so like we saw our Caveo implementation um, timeline, we're right at that same spot for our key program elements. So the next thing really is leveraging the Cofeo analytics to really help us drive the adoption uh, and really help people understand that the changes that we're asking to make this transformation really do benefit the company. And then of course we want to data automation. It's the big thing these days. How do we connect systems and, and automate data to, to make things even better? Uh, create this culture of sharing. It just becomes second nature to share information instead of trying to hoard it. And then that will lead us to be an industry leader within knowledge management. Tammy, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, I probably want to go to the bottom of your chart over there, but I mean, I think this is everybody's problem. Uh, when you're on a big company that you have like uh, 50,000 different applications and then uh, uh, 267 APIs connecting all of them, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, how, what was your strategy to kind of uh, tell them to stop with that madness and let's do the right thing? Um, so we started small. Um, you know, that's why we started in sales and sales actually feels small in comparison to the rest of the company, but it was, it was rather large. Um, when we started on this, they, Jacobs as a company had already started on this. This is madness to have so many different systems journey themselves. So it was a natural fit to bring in knowledge management, to give them a, sort of that extra business case or the extra why they needed to do this. And again, that's where the, the focus that KCS uh, provided us really helped drive that forward because we said, hey, you know, you, you've got these common platforms, you've got these things. Um, I came from a merger and acquisition. And so our knowledge base was what was on SharePoint. And so that's kind of how we brought our existing knowledge base and said, hey, here's really a quick, easy way to continue with Jacob's knowledge you're already leveraging Salesforce for the structured data that you're working on within sales. It's a natural fit. We've got a way through something like Coveo to bring them together. Um, because we've been successful in that, and now we're looking at trying to leverage um, other systems. So there's a, um, our quality department uses Intellex as a platform. And so they've consolidated multiple different systems within quality themselves. They've picked one. We said, now that you've picked one, let's bring you under the Coveo umbrella in order to surface that content using something like uh, this artificial intelligence machine learning search engine that Coveo provides us. So it, it was kind of the the train had already left that station, I guess, is the analogy that I'll use, but um, KCS and, and the overall knowledge management program really, really gave them the why as to, it made sense to continue to move that direction. And if we could, um, just, I know some of you joined late, but if you could put your post uh, questions in chat and then we'll bring them up as uh, appropriate to Tammy in the flow or we'll save them to the end uh, for the Q and A. Mm -hmm. So thanks for that. And back to you, Tammy. Yeah, sure. So I think the next slide is the last one that we had anyway. Um, some lessons learned from this overall thing. Uh, OCM is at least 40%. I'd, I'd say it's maybe 50 or 60% of the overall program. It is such a huge component to it. Um, adoption does require a cultural change, right? People are used to the way that working, things that work for them, uh, but it gave us the sound business case for that common vision. Um, Caveo metrics, they've been hugely helpful to uh, monitor the engagement, to help us um, form a strategy around user adoption, and then how to expand that. Um, like I said, it's not a linear process. It feels like that game of Candyland sometimes. Uh, it, it's not straight up. It's not, you know, straight across. There's this continuous working loop that, uh, you know, two steps forward, one steps back, two steps forward. Um, and then the last thing is that it's definitely hard. It's really, really hard. Um, but at the end of the day, it, it really is worth it when we're able to step back and look at our timelines. We're able to look at our, our metrics and see that we are gaining successful adoption. We know that all of the efforts that we put into this are well worth it. That's the Great. And it looks like we do have some uh messages in the uh, chat. I don't know, Bonnie, if you want to uh, bring those sure, up. Yeah. 
Um, so, so Tammy, I guess the first question is, um, what does your rewards and recognition program look like? Uh, we give high fives <laughs> and we leverage our community of practice. Um, it's actually an area that we are looking at trying to expand because now that we have uh, some awareness from our leadership, we have the buy-in from our leadership and various levels of stakeholders. That was the first thing that we really had to do was identify the stakeholders and get that leadership buy-in. Um, we're now set to start something like a reward and recognition program because we, we know that it is important, right? Nobody wants to do things, um, basically work for free, right? So, um, we try to do it in little ways that we can, like I said, really call people out in a meeting, acknowledge them in a community of practice, and we're hoping to take that into a, the next step of what that would be now that we have that, that buy-in from our leaders to, uh, to support that. Great. Um, how important was the KCSP6 technology criteria to your decisions, and how aligned is your current setup with that? What things were you flexible on? So we know that technology should be our last decision. Um, in our case, the technology decisions were already made for us. So we didn't really need to do any, we didn't need to use that KCS checklist to make our technology decisions. But what we did do is we leveraged it to validate the ones that we already did. So we knew that Salesforce um, already um, was already set up, even the way that we were using it custom in, in its structured data uh, was already set up to, uh, to support KCS. We knew that um, just kind of by accident, the way we had set up our SharePoint environment uh, was sort of following that KCS methodology. So, um, you know, it was kind of reversed and backwards in our particular case, um, but for us, it all worked out. And like I said, it just really validated the way we were going. And are you benchmarking or using a KM maturity assessment to collect more data in your journey, like APQC schools? Yeah, so we, we took a, a baseline assessment of how people felt knowledge management was going at the company. Um, we did that sometime last year, so we're not quite into our full year maturity. Um, it is expanded a little bit because um, there's been a lot of change within the way that we work and the way uh, our priorities have been set based on all of that. But um, that, that's our direction is that we'll continue at least every year to um, do that maturity assessment and see where we are and hopefully see it going in the same direction that our, uh, our program is, is up that hill. Okay. Um, what type of leading and lagging metrics are your leaders most interested in seeing? Uh, they wanna see the amount of content that we have um, one of the things that we're looking at now is um, how to really assess our content health. So, um, you know, we've, a lot of our stuff is um, been pulled from servers because we have to use it over and over again. That project that we did five years ago is still really value, valuable and relevant to our clients today. So um, we've pulled a lot of content. Um, I don't know if you noticed on our timeline, we, we called it Content Palooza. Uh, so we've pulled in a lot of content. So we have a lot of numbers. We know our content numbers are going up. So the next thing to focus on is the health of our content and being able to see that. Um, our leaders want to see the the ROI, what's our return on investment for this? And this is where user adoption and um, things like the detailed metrics, being able to identify our content gaps, that's really gonna uh, help benefit that bottom number uh, because it's, if what we can do is if we said, so we said we, we estimated based on various things that it took people 30 to 40 percent of their time to uh, find information. That's kind of the metric that we're trying to assess to see if that number goes down. I only spend 10 percent of my time, which then translates into dollar saved because the amount of labor and that's the ROI that our leaders are lo really looking for. Okay, um, this one this one is an interesting um, question. I think I have a follow up question for this one actually. Um, so, do you have any um, non KM dedicated roles to participate in creating and maintaining knowledge? Yeah, so particularly sales. Sales creates a lot of information, um, and those are their their role is sales, inside sales, outside sales, um, sales operations, whatever title that. Uh, we seem to, to give people. Um, and that's part of our knowledge management 
program is we're trying to create awareness outside of these dedicated roles uh, and even outside of our community of practice is why the content that they are creating is so important and that feeds into our culture of sharing and and even outside of sales you know it's it's hr it's contracts it's um legal it's all of these different departments because particularly for sales sales is a a big consumer of all of that data right and so that's where um this overall culture of sharing really is important for us because it's it's there are going to be far more non-dedicated km dedicated roles creating content that we want to share and then we want to leverage the dedicated roles to help manage that content, to do things like the content health, to help us keep the knowledge base fresh, to make sure that things are tagged correctly so that uh, when they use Coveo and the facets and and, uh, we start to look at the metrics behind that, that they actually make sense. So that's really where we're going with those is everyone in the company really should be sort of trained in a sense or aware of what knowledge management is and why this culture of sharing is so important so that we can then leverage those dedicated roles to really help us manage it and make it successful. Great. I'm just going to continue through here because we've got a lot of great questions. Um, let's see, do, does your um, community practice support your coaching model? Yes. Today, yes, I don't have any reason why not to. People are really eager to learn and get more information and then to, to share it out. Um, we're, we're still fairly early in that, that overall journey. Like I said, we just sort of relaunched our community of practice, but that, that's definitely where we're going. And so far I've been successful in that. All right, um, reward or recognition, what is more effective? Have you seen a difference there? Uh, well, we've only done really more recognition, so I, I, I can't really say right now, but um, everybody loves rewards. <laughs> and so, uh, like I said, we, it, as we've gotten this uh, support and buy-in from our leadership, we're hoping to add to the reward piece of that. But we try really hard to do the recognition um, piece of it. So. Okay, so we have... Um... A comment here. I'm the product manager for knowledge at Salesforce. When is unstructured versus structured knowledge content the right tool for the job? Do you migrate back and forth? Oh, it's a great question and something we haven't fully solved, <laughs> to be honest. Um, you know, we our employees say structured data because then you can pick whatever format that you want, whatever template that you're using. I only want this piece of information. Um, And so they really wanna go to this sort of structured side that Salesforce can really help us leverage and and, um, support. But we also know time is a really big thing. None of us have enough time. And so when our sales teams in particular have created these documents and they submit them to the client and they've got a lot of really great content in there, that's that sort of unstructured content, right? Because it's written in the template or the format or it's slanted towards what the client has been asking for. And we want to get that into the knowledge base too, but to pull it apart into a more structured format takes people in time and knowledge and know-how and and it just starts to become a a real challenge to how to take an unstructured set of information and put it into a structured form. So that's why we really leverage something like SharePoint where we wanna keep your unstructured document um, and use sales uh, Coveo to search for it, whether it's in a structured format like Salesforce or it's in an unstructured document where we're keeping in, in SharePoint right now. All right. Um, and I'm just gonna continue with the last question that was posted because it's kind of similar. Um, what, what challenges did you face in integrating with SharePoint? Any special considerations with security and facets and or taxonomy? Great question. So um, there have been some challenges with SharePoint in that the user context that we're getting because of the way that the company is set up and the, the, the uh, user relevance that we have um, is limited. So we don't get as much context about the users that we would like uh, through Coveo for uh, the, the result relevancy piece of it. We see a lot more success right now in uh, Salesforce because we get a lot more user content in there. Um, the taxonomy, piece of it, we've had a a good uh, metadata structure that we leveraged in our SharePoint implementation. Uh, With those structured documents, we try to leverage as much as we can with um, 
the same data values that are used in CSP so that when you can do those facets, there's only a couple right now where there's a true match that we can use facets that apply to both CS, uh, Salesforce and SharePoint. Um, but that's what we're working on as a company uh, as a whole. We're looking at what they call a master data management strategy, really, so that across all uh applications, whether it's uh, Oracle for like HR and finance, if it's Intellex for quality, if it's Salesforce um, and CSP, if it's SharePoint, right, we're all using the same common taxonomy so that we can better leverage those facets in our search. So it's uh, something we're uh, aware of. It's definitely on our radar. We, we started really small, like we only have a few uh, common uh, values and facets that we can use across both platforms, but we know that that that, that will grow as our overall uh, common taxonomy and data management plan really start to to uh, flesh out within the company. All right, and how do you leverage Coveo Analytics to improve search as well as knowledge? So we we're we're kind of at the the beginning of our journey, and Coveo says, "Don't worry too much about this." But right now, we're focused on our user adoption. So we get good user context in our Salesforce implementation. We get some basic user context in our SharePoint implementation, and we're trying to really look at all right, where which areas of the company um, are using it. Um, which areas uh, seem to not have as much. So then we go back to our OCM and is it more about awareness or is it about some training and coaching on how to use something like Coveo? Um, then we, uh, the next step is to really look at those content gaps, right? What are people searching on and not getting uh, a result for? So far, what we found is that it's mostly uh, people are looking for content that isn't there yet. So a big one, um, resumes right now is the, the biggest piece of information, the biggest asset that people are really using Coveo for. And um, while we have about 20,000 resumes, we are 55,000 employee firm, right? So there's still a gap in what we know the content needs to be. And, and so we're working on various programs with HR and, and our talent acquisition teams and stuff to really um, start to get employees to put the resume in there. So we're looking at them on a really high level. We haven't gotten into the really detailed level um, where we know we can and eventually we'll get to as far as like, oh, they're looking for this and this isn't, uh, this didn't come up. So now we need to go. Now that we have the roles, right? That's where the roles really came in and are important. They're looking for this project description and they didn't get any hits, uh, but you know, five people in the last week have been looking at it. So we, we know, know who to go to and have somebody to actually write it up and get it back into our knowledge base. Awesome. So we've got a couple more questions here. I'll try to get through them all. Um, is there any difference in KM between sales and service and support in your org? If yes, could you elaborate? Yeah, so so uh, a little bit, and then I should elaborate on this. So um, HR has a service and support um, model. IT has a service and support model. And actually, both of those departments have also... Um, embraced KCS and are really leveraging KCS to its true service and support uh, model. Um, so then we've in sales, we've modified that, right? As we discussed, we had to modify kind of what those are, but we work with the HR and the IT uh, organizations to say, this is what's common. This is where they're different. So they have a single knowledge article model for IT support, for example, or for HRs. I'm looking up information on benefits. And so you've got a single one. Um, go back to our, our diverse uh, organization. Um, even those knowledge articles on a ben particular benefit could vary from country to country. So they're really trying to streamline how do you get that in and get maybe to a, a single knowledge article. And they're using KCS to help them focus and leverage that. And like I said, it's different than sales then because we've got we've got more, we've got different ones, we've got different versions. It doesn't always make sense to consolidate into something single because we've got, you know, just because we have a particular write-up on a project, we may have five different slants or the ways that, that we're writing up about that project because to one client, the sustainability portion of that project is what's really important. To the another client, it's how we actually engineered that project that's really important. And so we wanna 
recognize that there are different ways that we need to treat that that single sort of idea or concept of business asset, uh, which is different than a service and support model. What about with IT support? What are the knowledge contributions um, of IT support and what challenges were there with support rep buy-in to contribute? So good question. I'm not really sure. Um, we have a uh, IT knowledge manager. Uh, we are in contact with each other. We know that uh, we're leveraging these cases processes and then we've got this overall program, but I don't know the details of their particular uh, implementation. Um, I do know that they're leveraging, like I said, KCS because it allowed them to go also as a business case to say, hey, even within our IT organization, we're doing things, you know, they, they use ServiceNow as their platform. Uh, even though they were all using ServiceNow, they were kind of approaching things a little differently in different countries, for example, or different areas of within the IT department. And so they're leveraging KCS to kind of bring them all together within their own little department. But beyond that, I'm not really sure what the details are about that implementation. Okay. Um, and how do you show KM progress to leadership in the company to gain additional support? So it seems like you've had to do this a couple of times. Um, yeah, so it, it's um, numbers, right? It's all about the numbers. So we, we've taken um, various things like the amount of time, we've taken feedback. Um, we just presented to our leadership and said, all right, if, you know, our baseline, they were spending 30 to 40%. Now we know that they're spending less time and we know who they based on this it took me three days, for example, to, to find somebody because I had to pick up the phone and call two people and somebody was on vacation. So I had to wait three days. So we started to quantify all of those comments and then put them into numbers that we were then able to present to, to our leadership. And, and that was just actually about a month ago now. So uh, it's a very recent sort of acknowledgement and awareness at that senior leadership, uh, you know, executive leadership level. Um, but they they saw the value in it. They saw that, okay, there is real numbers. Um, I know that uh, somebody at Coveo helped uh, my boss really start to quantify what that ROI is. I think it was $2.6 million within the last year that we were able to say that we've gotten a return just based on implementing some process implementing knowledge management. And it, it's, it's that combined, we've, we've leveraged the tools, we streamlined the tools. So instead of supporting five tools, we support two. It's the people, right? The, the process is a little bit more streamlined. So instead of calling five people, you only have to either do a search or call one because we've streamlined and have a role for you to call. So um, that's how we've been able to, to quantify that. Okay, and, and then, you know, uh, there's a question about one of our favorite numbers. Um, what strategy have you used in Coveo in order to create case deflection um, from customers? So we don't really do case deflection because that's not really what it is that we're doing. We're really trying to leverage um, uh, something like Coveo so that people can find things. Now we've started okay, we, we use CSP cases, for example, Salesforce cases that if you can't find something, can you escalate it? But it's really very, very much in its infancy as far as that, that goes. And so because we don't do a true case deflection, that's not really a number that we track. All right. Um, what has been the single most effective thing you did to help teams bake in KCS behaviors into their processes? Hmm. Show them value of the framework. I think that once we've, we've said, hey, we've got this set up, we, we have a, a way that we're going to uh, do this and we're gonna help make things easier. Um, I think part of it is that things were so challenging before that anything to do would help would be good. Right, so um, we, and then we, we build on that. We, we leverage the, the positive uh, feedback that we're getting. And, and it's mostly positive. It's not all positive. Nothing's all, all positive. We get some frustration. And then we look at that and say, okay, why is this person frustrated? And we can say, all right, it's because of this. We need to add training or more communications in this area. Or you know what? Um, we don't have a change champion in that particular area. And so that person's sort of out there in the dark. And so we're, we're trying to leverage it that way um, to, to really drive and show the value of what the program is. All right. And then, um, so you mentioned IT, HR, and sales all leveraging KCS. Do you have a KCS council yet to keep all of those um, on the same page? 
not yet. That's part of our overall knowledge management transformation program that we're about to launch. Um, we have over the last year been informally connected. So like I said, IT, HR, legal, contracts, everybody has this desire. And then once the word spreads and they're like, oh my gosh, you, you tell me how to do this. Um, that's when we introduce them to the, the KCS principles. So, um, you know, we're, we're doing it informally. And now that we've got that senior leadership buy-in and we're, we're expanding the program itself, um, we'll start to put in something like that, that, that KCS council or KM council to, to keep everybody on board. It's a governance committee really is what that is. All right, and then one more question. Can you measure via tooling how long people take to find something and or is it service-based? And we got another question that just popped in too. Is it survey-based, sorry. Did you get that? Yeah, it's, it's more survey-based. We've done a couple of surveys. Um, we, like I said, it's that, that feedback loop of, oh my gosh, uh, I just went out and used Coveo and it used to take me three hours to find something and now it took me five minutes. So those are the things that, we, that we've leveraged. Um, we're really starting to, trying to get a feel for, for how to capture that, that information, right? Because it's, it's, uh, it's not a straightforward, we don't, nobody's timing you on your computer to see how long it is that, that you're um, spending to do a search or how long it used to take you to do something. So it's this really sort of informal feedback. But um, I think as we start to expand this, we'll find ways to, to track that because we know it's an important metric to keep track of for sure. Yeah. And we did get one more question come in. So can you talk more about the dedicated people to run your program and the key roles versus what was expected from the sales team? Sure. So um, previously, before we really got our KM framework and those, those roles in place, um, there was almost an expectation that everyone in sales would share their information. So once you worked on a bid, you've got your, your proposal team together, and then at least one person on that would put it into a repository of some sort. Many of them used file servers or their hard drives and their computers and all the things that make us scream and go nuts, right? Because it's that sort of very siloed way of keeping that information. But there was this informal expectation that, that, that that's where you went, you would keep that we knew that as soon as, uh, particularly in sales, as soon as sales is done with one, they immediately go to the next. So to ask them to put it into a repository and to um, tag it with certain pieces of information, um, we asked for 10 things. Three are re absolutely required to put to upload it, um, but we asked for 10 to give it context. And we found that that they were off to the next bid, right? They, they just didn't have time to go back. And so we didn't have good knowledge management. And so when we implemented our, our formal roles, we really said, okay, we need, like my role as the strategy lead is to help them understand what KCS is and why we have this knowledge management framework and how we're going to engage our stakeholders and do this OCM. And from there we had uh, some, uh, the, the knowledge workers. So we leverage our, uh, business service centers in uh, Krakow and in India to really help us do some of the, the work that maybe our sales teams didn't have time for. So what the sales team does is we now have a process where they take that bid and they upload it through a request form. And then some of our knowledge workers then take that and they process it and they put it into the right repository. They make sure it gets tagged correctly um, so that it's available and useful. And part of that, that uh, automated process is um, peak that we're, you know, uh, striving to get in the next, the next two peaks, I guess, uh, is to, to automate as much of that data as possible, right? So that you go from my sales team, I'm, I've got this content, I want to share it, I put it in through this process uh, tool and any data that's been set along that way kind of goes with it. And then you leverage a knowledge worker to to then manage the health of that content, manage the health of the data, uh, use your analytics to say, hey, this didn't come up, but why? Oh, it's because it was mistagged or something and, and leverage the knowledge workers that way. So um, we're, we're transitioning, right? What that expectation is of those roles from, you're in sales, your role is to do sales. You're gonna be good at that. Our knowledge workers, that's what they do. That's their role is they're gonna make sure that the knowledge is properly tagged and used and leveraged. And then, uh, like I said, progress to what is that content health and uh, how does that feed into uh, the next thing like our content gaps. 
Great. That was, that was, um, let's see, we've got one more question. I'll take one more. How do you train the knowledge workers? Do you have a training program set up for them to level up through the KCS roles? Uh, that's what we're working on. We're, we're definitely trying. So um, right now we've uh, set up a knowledge management transformation network. Um, so our, our executive sponsorship and our um, stakeholders or leaders are uh, the, the high level managers. Um, we have what we call uh, the, the knowledge management transformation leader. So right now that's a lot of our, our sales folks that are either tied to a knowledge management role, formal knowledge management role, or are in an influential position that they can then um, take that information and push it out to their change champions. We've gone through a, um, we've met biweekly for the last six months. Uh, walking them through what is knowledge management, what is OCM, what is an ad card process, really doing that. A, a formal training program and the company itself is also really um, sort of leveling up its uh, uh, learning programs. So what we want to do is we want to take all of the information that we've created in this last round of, of coaching and training and um, video it and create these e-learning programs. So that as we bring in new people, as we expand across the company, that's what they're part of their training is to go in and you know review these various modules of what knowledge management is and, and then focus on how that would uh, apply to their particular role. Awesome. All right, so um, there is one last comment in there, Tammy, that you might want to read, but aside from that, I think we're all through, through all the questions. So Arnfin, then I'll pass it back to you. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much, uh, Bonnie and Tammy. That was a, a really nice presentation and a dialogue from uh, the participants and all of your great answers. That was awesome. So thank you so much. And uh, we will be uh, posting the recording. So everyone on this will get the recording. Do you mind if we also have your presentation that we could pass along with that? Yeah, so Bonnie's got a copy of that. That's great. Be fine. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you all very much. Again, this was an excellent uh, dialogue and excellent presentation. So thank you so much. And you thank all you. have a, a great day. Thank you. Thank you, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.